Hello, this is Gagan Deep Kaur on behalf of Total Telecom. The, the global semiconductor industry is in news lately because of unprecedented shortage, which is crippling several industries, including automotive, electronics, and smartphones. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, along with several geopolitical issues, have led to this supply and demand gap. China, which is the largest consumer of, uh, which is the largest consumer of semiconductors, is 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 slowly but steadily growing its competencies to become self-sufficient. Can it help the world in addressing chip shortage? I have with me, I have with me Christopher uh, Taylor, Director RF and Wireless Components at Strategy Analytics, and Shravan Kundajala analyst at Strategy Analytics to help us better understand the growing role of China in the global semiconductor uh, industry. At what stage is China's plan to become self-sufficient in semiconductor production? Well, I th we think China still has a lot of work to do, but the plan appears to address the main areas of weaknesses in electronic design assistance software, that's EDA, and semiconductor equipment, in particular, photolithography. Uh, China, China needs not just to fabricate the chips, but uh, they, they need the design uh, software and equipment without having to rely so much on uh, other countries for those. Uh, China has to approximately double its production of semiconductors for its own consumption from 15% of China's needs to 30% to lessen the effects of supply disruptions on production of electronics. In lithography, Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment Company offers the 600 slash 20 flagship lithography machine which uses an argon fluoride excimer laser generating 193 nanometer deep UV light and immersion lithography for 90 nanometer chips. By Q4 of this year, the company will offer a machine capable of 28 nanometers, uh, equivalent to the ASML 1980i. So with this, uh, with this capability, Chinese semiconductor companies would not have to rely on buying machines from ASML and having them maintained and serviced. Uh, with multiple patterning, it should be possible to make a more advanced version. Uh, we think that China will have its own 14 nanometer capable machines uh, in 2022. In EDA, China has Empyrean Technology, a world-class EDA company with global customers. And uh, more recently, they have three very promising EDA startups, XEPIC, Hygen Industrial Software, and Advanced Manufacturing EDA Company. China has, has started manufacturing uh, 28 nanometer and 14 nanometer uh, chips. What, what is the significance of, of this in the growth of China's uh, uh, you know, growing role in the global semiconductor industry? Well, 28 nanometer is the most popular process node globally. So uh, production of chips at 28 nanometer above will have the biggest impact on self-sufficiency and, and on shortages. Chips at 14 nanometers should be adequate for many processors, for phones and other devices, although not quite at the leading edge. The leading edge today is considered uh, five, five nanometers. Leading edge chips, uh, well, let's say at seven nanometers and below, made up only about 6.4%, six and a half percent of the $440 billion in chips that sold last year, according to the World Semiconductor Trade Statistics Group. Uh, it's a relatively small proportion. Of course, that will inc probably increase in the future. Today, more than 90% of the market is at 14 nanometers and above. Uh, Srava, do you have any comments? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, 
just I mean, uh, on China's 28 nanometer and uh, 40 nanometer progress, you know, we see, you know, China's biggest uh, semiconductor foundry, uh, this SMIC, SMIC, uh, it, the company is already producing 14 nanometer and uh, 28 nanometer chips for high volume applications. Uh, such as a smartphone applications processors, and we still see a significant volume for 14 nanometer chips, especially in low-end smartphones. Uh, you know, China. We think China has a big role to play in 28 nanometer and 14 nanometer. And aside from uh, low-end smartphones, uh, we also see automotive and industrial applications. Uh, uh, can benefit from this 28 nanometer and above process nodes. Uh, and uh, we think China is well positioned to address uh, these new application, these applications, uh, uh, including low end smartphones, automotive and industrial. Uh, today, if you look at uh, the global uh, you know, 14 nanometer production um, uh, by country, you know, uh, you know, Taiwan and South Korea together account for the majority of 14 nanometer production today, but uh, the success of uh, you know China in 14 nanometer and 28 nanometer is really critical for the country to claim its stake uh, uh, in the global semiconductor industry. Uh, you mentioned that the manufacturing of, of 14 nanometer and 28 nanometer is, is a critical milestone in in in, in growing role of China becoming self-sufficient. Do you see the country playing a major role in addressing the uh, global chip shortage? Uh, yeah, let me let me take that. I, I think any any production of more chips would help, of course. According to China's general administration of customs, China imported about 310 billion of uh, in value of chips in 2020 out of the 440 billion semiconductor market, which, which is around 70% of the chips. And of course, most of the imported chips went into production of electronics, uh, more than half of which China exported to the rest of the world. So with production of more chips in China, any shortages affecting imports of chips would ease, helping reduce shortages of electronic devices. And some of the shortages we've seen here in, in the US, and I think in much of the rest of the world during the uh, COVID epidemic, electronic thermometers, automotive electronics, uh, gaming consoles, sewing machines, believe it or not, printers, computers, and computer monitors. And the list goes on. It's, it's even things not electronic that rely on electronics for production. Sravan, any comments? Sure, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, just to continue Chris, um, yeah, articulation. Yeah, last year uh, we have seen, uh, uh, you know, this uh, semiconductor shortages and the shortages are still persisting. You know, multiple factors, including, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic driven demand, uh, and uh, earlier than anticipated uh, recovery in demand in segments such as automotive, stockpiling uh, and double ordering. And all of these factors contrib contributed to semiconductor shortages. Uh, the semiconductor industry is now looking for you know, more capacity and uh, we think China adds geographic diversity. And I think even companies outside China can now uh, you know, can also benefit from China's uh, semiconductor investments and uh, China's semiconductor progress. Uh, semiconductor shortages, uh, you know, if you, you know, if you look broadly, uh, you know, the shortages point to a strong underlying demand, uh, you know, and many companies uh, in the industry now uh, expect these shortages uh, to persist through 2022. Uh, if you look at the global uh, semiconductor, uh, total available market TAM, you know, the COVID-19 uh, has helped uh, in the industry to permanently, uh, you know, increase the TAM of the global semiconductor market size in, in multiple areas, you know, thanks to this, uh, the, uh, thanks to the acceleration of digital transformation. So we think China's contributions and investments uh, 
it will definitely help the world. Uh, China's investments, especially in 28 nanometer and above nodes, it will help uh, you know alleviate uh, shortages in components such as uh, power management chips and uh, display driver ICs. Uh, the semiconductor shortages, uh, you know, they have definitely highlighted the importance of self-sufficiency, and uh, China is uh, progressing well uh, in that regard. So, go, so going forward, what is what are the next steps and 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 the new innovations that China is likely to come up with? What are the new in uh, new competencies that the country is likely to develop? Um, well, it's it's hard to it's hard to know what those will be exactly, but certainly China has the potential to develop its own innovations in EDA and uh, semiconductor production machine technologies. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, it's possible to develop new techniques for advanced lithography. China could use such innovations uh, to develop advanced chips for artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, machine learning, and other emerging applications. And, and just as an aside, let me, let me tell a little story. In the 1990s, U.S. semiconductor companies took a gamble on ASML's immersion lithography machines mm -hmm. to avoid buying machines from Japan. Uh, it's kind of a similar situation uh, now between the U.S. and China. So even though this is a gamble, ASML's machines turned out to be a big advancement for uh, smaller nodes compared to machines from Canon and uh, Nikon at the time. And today China has the scientific and engineering talent to come up with similar innovations in equipment. And uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think they will come up with some innovations.